Okay, so hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. Uh, this is April 19th to 2022. We are going to talk about onboarding today. Um, I'll give you a little brief history um, if you're not familiar with the Find Calm Here community uh, or you're new to the Find Calm Here community basically. The community uh, was relaunched in 2021 with the focus of having support for people who are building an online community on the Mighty Networks platform. And since then, it's grown to like people that are not on the Mighty Networks and what I've learned are people that like found that the Mighty Networks didn't work for them as far as the platform goes. So um, I basically expanded a lot of the community structure to really encompass what it means just to be a community builder, uh, to be a connector, to create engagement, because there is all, all topics that we can discuss regardless of the platform. So what I'm showing you right now is the inside of the Find Calm Here community as it looks today, and a little bit about the guides that we're going to talk about today. Um, oh, you're welcome. Um, so the onboarding guides kind of, or the guides in general, the calm guides came out of conversations that I had with Find Calm Here members in the summer of 2021, who said we really um, want some structure uh, to education around community building. So I started with launching a guide called, and I'll go over, it's in the resources section for anybody who's not familiar with the network or hasn't navigated to this area. So on the left sidebar, it's in the resources area. I called it resources just because I wanted to not lock myself into a course or something. I feel like that's broad enough that I could do multiple things with that area. And it's nice that the Mighty Networks allows you to customize that area. So. Basically, um, I started with a launch guide and then the current structure we had in 2021 was that the Mighty Mastermind, who was made up of a few, a few people, they were all building Mighty Networks and we came together and we met for 90 days. And after the conclusion of that session, they said about getting more feedback on an onboarding or re resources around onboarding and supporting their members as they launch or as they bring the members in. So what I put together was what's called the Calm Guide to Onboarding, and it's just a step-by-step -step process of things that I've, ways that I've created onboarding pro programs for clients and for myself. This was almost a year ago, Kathy, it was a part of the initial one, and um, it, it changed a lot. So I learned a lot because I worked with so many more people over the last year that it's really been helpful for me to update these these guides. So before I get into this guide, I wanna just discuss a little bit of different ways and if ask if anybody has a current onboarding guide or onboarding plan that they are implementing in their community process. Anyone? Kathy's nodding. Anybody else? Kathy, what do you do right now? Can you share real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, so currently, as soon as someone signs up, they get a welcome email um, that I set up through Zapier. Um, and then it goes through an automation. And it's, I call it a, a three-day course. Um, it's an email course. So each, each day they get uh, an email with its um, two videos and like two lessons her email and it's just like, you know, how to set up your profile. Okay, your, you know, your task for today, you know, put up, put up your profile picture, put in your summary, then some of them is like, how to comment, find a post, comment, how to follow, and you know, all of the different things. Um, and so through those three email lessons, um, they go through the whole process of setting up their profile, following topics, um, and, and following people and the importance of like teaching them all the great the things. I do need to update it, but it works. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's great. Um, it's so, so I wanted to get, and we you can, we'll come back to you, Kathy, because I want to just talk about a couple different ways. You named a little bit of uh, different ways of creating onboarding experiences for your members. Um, and I was at a recent event in Memphis this uh, past uh, two weeks ago 
which was called Clicks, which is the Community Leaders Institute Expo. And one of the speakers there went through what works and what doesn't in larger organizations as far as onboarding. And one of the comments that they said was, what doesn't work is automation, which is frustrating in a way because they were like, it, a lot of people talk about automation being this like let's make it easy but sometimes it depends on the context and your community structure as to if that's going to be the best way to go about it and also depending on how you have it worded or the language that you use some people might actually feel off put is what he said their studies and resources said that or the research that they did a whole bunch of re research and i can share with you later about that but just to quickly say that what they found was that people wanted to, they're joining a community and they wanted a personal connection with somebody, whether that was an ambassador, whether that was the host, whether that was somebody that invited them, that like walked them in the door. And one of the people um, even mentioned about on a podcast, and I'll share this as, as well too, but there was a podcast episode I listened to on my drive and it was talking about the idea of like, when you go to a party and you invite a friend and you're like, come to this party with me, you don't just like come in and then tell them like go you know go read this thing or something you actually say hey like meet denise meet maria here's kathy they give you like the download of like here's what we do here and so while it's really helpful to have i think there's multiple things that you want to have right part of it being maybe an automated thing where they get something so you're not specifically giving you know maybe you can't you know, physically, like you don't have time to like go in and introduce yourself to somebody or your, your ambassador maybe doesn't have time. But there's times when you don't have to go within the next, immediately it could be like over time. So I just wanted to kind of say that was one of the feedback things that I got from the conference. Um, I did write up a whole report on it and there's a lot more information out there that I will be sharing with you today. So the I'm just going to go through this briefly. I'm not going to read everything. And I, Kathy, I see it. You have your name, your hand up, but I'm going to hang on for one second just because I want to go over the outline and the changes that I made. Um, so I got feedback that there was a lot of information in this. And what I did was pretty much simplify it and give you clear, um, clear instructions, um, how to get the most out of this guide, tutorials and resources, ask questions, um, post your post questions in the comments. Share on our our um, activity feed in the Find Calm Here community. Do the worksheets. Print them out. Fill them out. Just simple things. But like we talked about with some of the like the guideline stuff, you just want to say the thing so that people really understand that this is something that they are allowed to do and that it's it's certainly much welcomed to ask questions. <laughs> Um, and then connect with members, ask the other members like about their onboarding process like Kathy was just showing us. Um, and then it's broken up into three sections and I did shorten the sections and kind of condense them a bit since last year. But basically it's about creating your onboarding plan, connecting your members to spark a little bit of conversation when they come in, and then creating growth for, um, for your Mighty Network as you expand and grow. So those are just the basic sections, but then in the individual areas, there's a few different steps. So we all kind of know what our onboarding is. Uh, it's just the process or method in which you choose to invite members. Um, practical reasons, like we mentioned a little bit, is easy to understand guided navigations for members to join, so it doesn't make it complicated. Some Mighty Networks is still a new platform to a lot of people, so we want to make it as easy as possible. We want to make sure we inform them of the uh, in areas that we want them to pay attention to or access and then telling them a little bit about the community culture guidelines and that kind of a thing um and then i go into a little bit more here and i expanded this area but the the couple different multiple ways kathy talked about um an email sequence I have worked on in the past year, a lot of people do the video walkthroughs. It really depends on your members to see if they are going to want to watch videos or not. Some people enjoy videos. Other people just say, tell me how to do it with screenshots. If you do multiple ways, that's like the best because then you're hitting all the different areas. So what I suggest is you maybe do a quick loom video that you record some brief introduction like hi welcome to the community we're excited you're here 
you know, here's something quick to get you started, like a, you know, two, three minute video, something like that. And then I put together some orientation packets for some clients because they found this really helpful. So if you click on, and when you go into this resource, when you guys do it yourself later in the community, um, you can click on all of these things. But when you go on to the um, slide deck here, I have, you'll see another client example of these, these kinds of slide decks that I created for clients that walk you, that walk the members through in a visual and instruction format. Um, and this is one I just created recently where I, and I just screenshotted these. So that's why there's not a whole lot of explanation with what this is, other than to say that I just screenshot it to show you, like, I used some of their branding and then copied and pasted basically everything together so that it's summarized in this one area. So it says how to navigate is their, is their, is their branding. And then we tell them, here's where the course is. It's this certification course is in the courses area. So that's helping them get to where that is. Um, so that's one example. And that, or that's the, so the slide deck with the um, orientation packet is one. And then like how to navigate, this is actually within a course. So I'm gonna show you an example in a minute of that in the Find Calm Here community. But that's within a course. So in the beginning of their course, they have an orientation section. And in that orientation section, they have step-by-step -step things, kind of like Kathy was talking about, breaking it up with a little bit of video and some screenshots that I put together for this client so that their members can learn by listening or by seeing the screenshots and reading the directions. And another example is a challenge. So I did a challenge for a client where she basically had a structure uh, in a, inside a course area, which they called the on-demand content. And within that on-demand content, they had a um, show up for you challenge in 2022 at the beginning of the year, where they basically had each week, they had some instructions and with the goal of like setting intentions and creating um, changes in their life, they're also getting the members to be active in the community. So they're creating habits for that member so that they keep coming back and that's kind of the learn by doing which is the discussion i mentioned here's a little bit more of like the challenge screenshots that we put together uh, for this client um, we're so glad you've uh, decided to join us um, for the next 30 days here's what we're going to do um, here's what you need to know so that they have specific directions and those are kinds of things that can help members not only onboard them but also have them create habits when they're doing an actual bringing them into something like a challenge or something like that and then the other uh, thing we talked about was a concierge or one-to-one -one call and so let's say you have a higher priced uh ticketed uh, offer maybe it's 36 or four thousand dollars or something like that and that you're it's not the quantity but it's the quality of people that you're bringing in so because they're doing something at a more effective price. So it's not necessarily that you have to talk to a whole lot of people. It's more smaller and you're doing a personal onboarding. So it's a one-to-one -one call that you set up. And this was an example of a client um, PDF that I put together where she would show this as she walked this individual through a slide deck when they were on a virtual call. So she would give them the screenshot. She would give them, here's what you're gonna do. And then she would also send the PDF to them so that they had it as their reference, like before they got into the community, this would be something that she would share. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second and see Kathy, if you remember your question and then if anybody else has questions before I go to another section. Yeah, actually it wasn't a question. It was um, another part of my onboarding is along with the email, as soon as somebody joins the community, and um, and then I come in, sorry, my dog is barking. Um, I send them a DM. Um, and so I have a boilerplate that, that, that I, you know, copy and paste and, and include a, a name. So I make sure I change the name. Um, and then on top of that, then I then start a group chat with my moderators and me and that new person introducing them to the moderators and letting them know that, you know, if they have any issues getting around or whatever. So yeah, there's actually three parts. I forgot about the 
the the personal when you said about the personal thing that's really important um and i get a lot of feedback in um from that part as well um so great and your your onboarding is is working because your membership is growing <laughs> so people aren't getting confused and leaving they're staying right oh yeah definitely that's amazing. Uh, anybody else had questions? I know Maria might not be super familiar with Mighty Network, so I did want to make sure I uh, circled over to you, Maria, and just asked if you wanted to have any questions or anything. I think it's very interesting. I'm just getting familiar with the onboarding process. I'm doing a, a course, uh, a UX course, and I'm having a course about a project about onboarding. Mm. That's why to see more examples so I, i'm learning good well that's good do you work with melanie with the company there with uh, yes yes what's the company again it's uh uh penyon penyon that's right so yes. that melanie is another new new person that's joined our community but she actually invited she's not feeling well today so maria's here i guess as a part as a partner or somewhere in within penyon and can you tell us real quick about Panion? Because I do want to just learn more about Panion since you're here. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yes, so Panion is a community platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, we are developing our product more and more. And um, it's a community platform. Um, yeah. Yes. And, yeah. uh, so I don't know the features and functions, if they're the similar to Mighty Networks or whatnot, but I know Melly and I talked a little bit and they're still getting off. They're basically a startup getting up on the ground of, of basically creating a community platform. I don't know about similar to Mighty Networks, but maybe on the same path of like wanting to bring people together. I think it's a different audience, though, possibly. Yes, I think so. I think it's a different audience, but we are also like now figuring out our audience so uh it's yeah it's a bit broad there <laughs> no worries well thanks for sharing i'm sorry i put you on the hot spot there for a second but thanks <laughs> for sharing a little bit about that um denise did you have any questions before i move on i wanted to make sure i gave you okay cool all right let me go back so just speaking of examples i'm going to show you some actual not just examples of clients but actual things that i've built within the find calm here community so one thing i realized as i was working for clients was that it's really helpful in the topic section to have a, a start here place because that's typically the first place people go to when they are new to the community whether you direct them there or just kind of then when they're wandering around they want to say what is the topics area what do i find there um so i put together a start here and this is only for like things about the community. So I kind of revamped this area to say it's only stuff that like I write, basically, whether it's the the welcome message, our FAQ place, uh, our newsletters, our values. And now I just started doing an insider edition. So this is just um, to discuss the community strategy with Find Calm Here for our members and let you know about upcoming new features or events that are happening. Um, the thing that I don't really like about this is that there's no structure to it. And it's kind of like it's, you know, as topics go, it's whatever is the most recent or if somebody comments, it bumps it up. So whenever I would uh, have new members, I would tag them. This is another part of my onboarding. I would tag them in our welcome post and, and share with them any new places that I wanted to highlight for them. But it kind of got lost with all of these other things. So the other thing I started to do, which <laughs> I, built, <laughs> I built this entire thing at the airport the other week. <laughs> I was sitting at the airport on my way to Memphis and I put this all together. Actually, I think I was going to my, I can't remember where I was flying. I went from Memphis to, to Miami to DC in the last two weeks. So I'm a little fuzzy on places. But basically I decided to put together a start here course in the resources area um, that goes through structurally uh, a welcome by basically on the side here you can see it, it says welcome 
Um, and then I have a, our story so that people can get an understanding around the background with FindCom here. Our values and our member guidelines, which I recently put together. Um, what to expect as a new member of the Find Calm Here community. Our cohorts, so that everybody knows kind of what cohorts are active or not active. And then I have additional resources, which for this example is our guides and multiple areas that have resources. Um, and then I have split, I've split up into guides for potential Mighty Network hosts, guides for new Mighty Network hosts, and then Kong guides for current Mighty Network hosts. And at the bottom, there's a templates and checklist library. So these are all different areas, and I call areas, inside my Mighty Network for people. So I'm breaking it down so they can see all that what is Find Calm Here community, what they have access to. I felt like this was really important to create a structure for it. Um, I don't know if this is the best way, and it is pretty time consuming, so it might not be something that you'd wanna do. Um, and you might still be building all of these things. This is two years of my evolution of FindCom here. So you might not have all of these different areas, obviously. It might not be relevant for you to do something like this in a structured way. You also, I don't know if everybody, I know, um, Kathy, I think you're on the business plan. I'm not sure about Denise. I think you're on the business plan as well. Um, anybody who's on the community plan, obviously it doesn't come with this function. So you would have to use the topics unless you upgraded to the business plan. So I did want to make that distinction. Um, there was a time when I was not on the business plan. I had decided to just do the community and use the groups and the topics features and the events. Um, and then it was about a year ago when I decided to start using the business plan because I did want to build out some structured resources. Um, and then what that looks like inside of these when you go to click on these, I basically just have it broken down into the outline and then simple, here's our story if you wanted to read that. Um, I give you a background on Find Calm here and kind of all the <laughs> iterations that it was, that it has become. Um, I have a values area because I think that's important to tell people like, what's the purpose of us being here and um, why did I create fun come here? What do I want to experience as a host and what I hope you can experience as a member here? Um, I have some qualifying questions of like, if you answered to any of these questions, yes, you're in the right place. Just to confirm with them that they are, this is a space for them. Or if they're reading this and they're like, oh, this actually isn't what I need, then they know that it's usually this is something they would do I have this in an area before they join, so this would eliminate somebody coming in that doesn't, that has different expectations, but I've definitely gone through iterations of this because I've learned that what people, when I onboarded people, what they thought this was and what it actually is are two different things. So that kind of helps me like clear up, this is what you can expect. Um, and that's what the member guidelines as well. Um, da, da, da. And then I have a little bit more detail of Q&A of what can, you can expect as a Find Calm Here member. And I keep changing this, but I do have a, where do I start? I have a download starter kit. Now, I don't know that I really, I don't know. I put this together and now I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I keep going through iterations of this as well. Um, some people said like they wanted a big, just simple one steps. And so that's kind of what that is. Um, and then I had kind of like an incentive here of like, be a superstar and introduce yourself to one member and RSV to an event and do both, you know, kind of thing. Um, we recently announced the community member spotlights at the beginning of the year. So um, that was one of the new things that I set up in the beginning of the year. But you can see how that looks a little different than some of the other areas. Um, I, get, I say to get the most out of it, you can tag this topic, share your money network. I encourage you um, to do that, um, kind of highlighting some of the things that we do inside the community. Um, and then what else? So then these are the description of cohorts. I feel like I kept being asked about the cohorts and the differences between them and what's happening with them. So basically the cohorts are, are kind of 
silent right now, <laughs> I would say, because I was doing um, the Mighty Mastermind, but that kind of fell, fell to the wayside at the end of last year. And so I've decided not to continue the Mighty Mastermind right now as I'm focused on some other areas, like we talked about with the resources and the guides and the templates. Because what I found was people actually just want the template. <laughs> they want templates and they want checklists. That's what a lot of people tell me um, to make community building easy. So, but this is just the description. I did keep those spaces there, so you'll see them because I feel like it's important for people to know what is this space or if they have a question about it. And then the Community Consultants Collective is a new space that I started last year. And it's kind of, when I went to the conference, I met so many other people in the community industry that were interested in connecting. And so I created this amazing little space for people who are community consultants or some kind of you know startup with, with um, Melanie and things like that, where they want to learn best practices of being a leader, of being a consultant, talking about pricing, talking about our services, our offers in an open format. Um, we just grew a bunch. We had a lot of new members recently. We meet once a month, um, but that's what that space is about. It's just, I brought those people in. They're actually going to enhance our community overall because some of these people have 10, 15, 20 years of experience in the community industry. So they're just gonna bring that wisdom into the Find Calm Here community, which I feel like is super valuable. Um, I won't go over all these things, but I just wanted to give you an idea of like maybe some things that you could use to like create different onboarding experiences for your members in a structured way of just explaining to them. Here's where I break down the guides and say, you know, the guides for potential Mighty Networks. I put these together to see if anybody's like, maybe they just started becoming a, a Mighty Network host or they're just thinking about it, they're still not sure. Um, I put these guides together. They're basically resources that the Mighty Network um, had videos on, like d demo videos, or, or here's why our platform is really great videos, <laughs> basically. But I thought they were helpful to have all in one place for some people. Um, and then I have a guide, uh, the guides for new um, Mighty Network hosts, and I'm still working on building these out. So as I get better <laughs> with this, uh, you'll see more of these, but I'm going to, I'm working on a planning, Calm Guide to Planning Your Community Strategy, um, and then Calm Guide to Launching Your Mighty Network is, is the one I'm updating. And so the other ones that we have as far as current Mighty Network hosts are the Calm Guide to Tech Integration, which is really a step-by-step -step way of identifying what tech tools to use or not use depending on your needs in your journey. So I think a lot of us get overwhelmed with sales funnels and emails and you know Zapier and all of these things. And so the, the tech integration guide just kind of goes over like why it's why tech uh, tools are, are helpful and important, but how to like not get so overwhelmed with the tools in the very beginning because it's more about bringing people together and connecting with them and understanding what their needs are before you you know, spend time automating processes and things like that, which tends to be what people, when I have clients, they first connect with me and they're like, well, I gotta do an email sequence of this and that. I said, did you do discovery? Did we talk to people? <laughs> and they're like, well, kind of. And I'm like, let's start there. <laughs> let's see what they actually need before we talk about building all of these complicated tech tools into your workflow because anything you add into your community building workflow it's going to make it more complex meaning you're either going to have to do it yourself or you're going to have to have hire somebody to do it so either way it's going to cost you time or money um so i try to eliminate a lot of things and say what can we what do we absolutely need and what can we put on the shelf and worry about later so that's kind of what the tech uh, guide talks about and then we're in this uh, onboarding guide. So that's what we're with now. So those are the current um, guides that are set up. And then the templates and checklist library is new that I've just started to put together. And like I said, it's just gonna be a place where you can just go and like, if you want a checklist for your onboarding plan, that's what's gonna be there. If you want a checklist for, if you want a template for putting together some emails, some copy, I've written some for clients. I've just, I'm just gonna have a template there that you can basically just insert your community and say, instead of find calm here, you could say whatever your community is and insert it and it's gonna make it really easy for you. Um, and, and that's what I'm gonna say. I, I see there's something in the chat. Kathy says, looking forward to this. 
Um, and this is a good time to stop and just say, let's talk about onboarding and what your questions are. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple different ways to onboard members and I can talk to you about maybe things that have worked for my clients if you guys have any specific questions. I, I want to share um, kind of what you were talking about earlier. I just started a second group in my membership. Um, we're doing um, a five-day summit in May. And for people who purchase tickets, because it's open for free, but people who have purchased tickets, we we built a new group for them um, th where they'll be able to access um, their replays and build community um, in this, you know, while the summit is going on and in 60 days beyond. And that group does not have an email sequence. Um, the only thing that that group has is when they come in, we do the DM that um, I just DM them, welcome, let them know, you know, reach out to us if you need any help. I can tell you with that group, there's no engagement. Like no one's commenting. Um, I did a poll, I've got a few answers. There's very little engagement inside the group. Now in my main network um, is, I don't let, allow anyone to post, just the host and the moderators. Um, but I do have my icebreaker question when they come in and everyone who's coming in is answering icebreaker question. Mm -hmm. Then when they get in the group, they're not engaging with any of the posts um, in there. And so I find it really, I think it, it's like an AB kind of study, like, mm -hmm. you know, with the, has the email sequence the one doesn't and I can tell there's a big difference because my my main group we have a lot of engagement like you look at my analytics and we're really I think it's like 80 percent um it's it's a lot um and so yeah what's the know. difference in the groups it the difference is um well one is is my paid support group. And then the other one is just kind of like, um, while this, while we have the summit, just a place for people to meet other people with LS and, you know, we're giving them updates and things like that. Um, and so I was talking to one of my moderators of, okay, how can we build up engagement? Um, Cause we've done polls, we've, done you know intro post we've done i did a post today kind of hyping up we we added new speakers there's new updates and things and it's crickets so i don't know um i do have like you have the faq um i did an faq for my main group but it's also it's also in my um my main network. So like if you go in, there's a there's an article. This is FAQ, but all of the the um actual uh videos, because I did videos, um, send them to the LS to, to my main group. But but you can kind of look at the videos and see, oh, okay, well, I'm not part of that group, I'm part of the other group. So it still applies. Um but yeah, I just crickets. Do you have um, you so you don't have emails for this other group and it's a new it's a new group because it's a yeah, it's been active for a little bit like a week and a half. OK, what I've learned and at this conference, too, they mentioned about engagement is the hardest thing that everyone struggles with. And the percentage is kind of like um, an 80 20. So, or a 30, 70 sometimes, especially in the beginning. I, and that grows over time. So as your members are more, um, you know, in the community, typically, if you're bringing them in for an event, for example, they tend to be more active as the event happens. And sometimes um, engagement means they show up at the call, but they might not be the person to like, 
um, connect to a post or answer a question. And what I found is sometimes it takes people six months, <laughs> unfortunately, to, to really feel like it's there. for some reason in the Mighty Networks, it just takes people a while to feel like they're comfortable enough to answer a question or ask a question or share something. Um, the more active you are with those people, like if you're seeing them on a regular basis, if you're creating that bond with each other and with you, then they feel more comfortable and that happens a little bit faster, I think. But that's what I've seen. Um, it's, it's harder in free spaces as well. Free, you know, or like lower cost spaces, they don't have that higher, um, I invested, you know, $1,000 and now I'm going to show up. Like if they didn't have that pressure of like, oh, I've really invested and now I'm going to show up for myself. That's why I really talk about being, you know, having paid communities. And now hopefully your goal would be to convert them to, I would assume, to the paid space. So um, just sharing in that group of like, hey, we're actually, you know, once the summit's over or once everything is, is wrapped up, just kind of posting in there or briefly saying, we'd like to invite you into this other space. Here's where everything is happening. And then maybe you're just using that space to pop in, but not being so worried about the active, you know, who cares if it's not active because they're not paying <laughs> necessarily to be getting your time or energy. I mean, people, that's what I always, it's tough when you have, and I've struggled with this too, because I created these these groups, these cohorts in, in Fine Calm here, but then nobody was really interacting in them. They were really interacting in the main community. So what I learned was that I'm not too worried about the um, engagement in the, in the smaller groups. That happens when it happens, and that's great. But my focus, and that's my strategy, has been to have everything be in the main network. So it's really easy for people. Just I make it as easy as possible for them to communicate, to connect, to answer questions, and it's all on that main activity feed. And then if they are part of a smaller group like this collective that I mentioned earlier, there's some conversations that we'll have privately in there, but even like that new collective is, is not very, there's maybe 12 or 14 people in there, but most of them are just showing up on the virtual call once a month. They're not active throughout the month, whether I put content in or not. But tip, and, and just a heads up for everyone, I'm working on a celebration for our two year anniversary of Find Calm Here. We're going to have a virtual wellness forum in June, and I'm working on lining up speakers for that. And so hopefully that will help with bringing new people into our community. I will also give you, uh, as members of the community, uh, access to all of these amazing speakers, many of which I met at this conference and um, are, that are in the collective. And it's gonna be a really exciting experience. So I just put that kind of brief outline together this week and we're meeting in the beginning of May to work all of the details out about this event, but it's gonna be on June 20th. So just to let you know, that's the, the date and then we'll get the times and every, the schedule when I get that or organized with some speakers, but it's gonna be really, really awesome. So anyway, does anybody else had questions? Um, Denise, did you have anything you wanted to share or ask? Cause I didn't hear from you today, so. <laughs> no, I was just basically listening in. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, is there anything that you t a take away from today maybe that was helpful or is there anything you learned that uh, might help you? Well, one of the things that I, I know I need to focus on is the onboarding process. And so at the moment, the door is closed for new members into my community, and I'm going to open it up June 1. So kind of putting together that plan of one, the marketing and whatnot, but also what does it look like for new members as they come in? So this is all really good information as I create that plan. Yeah. And it's good to talk to your current members. And what's great about you know, having existing members and then doing these like new launches or new, new, whatever programs or whatever, bringing p new people in, whether, however that happens, um, you get to have the existing members kind of say what they really love. And then you can make sure you're doing that. And then if they're like, oh, we don't really need X, then you can say, great. So I don't need to include that, <laughs> you know, uh, in the next version, iteration, whatnot. Um, I've done, and Kathy knows this, I've done a lot of changes in the last year with Find Calm here because I kept just trying to listen to the members, but then understand what 
made sense for me, like I, you know, in my schedule, in my time as my client work started to really increase. So, yeah. Well, I'm not going to keep you all. I, I just wanted to make sure everybody got something that they needed. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, post them inside the community. Check out these guides. Check out my new resources areas. Uh, send me a direct message to give me any, any you know, feedback or uh, things that might be missing there as I very quickly put this all together in the meanwhile of traveling in the last two weeks. Um, and then uh, for uh, Maria, uh, Melanie, I'll, I'll connect uh, her with, with this event. If you have questions, I can send you anything you need. Kathy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mighty Networks is coming out with a checklist for onboarding. onboarding. Do you know anything about that? Suppose on there, like... Um... They're doing a live today, right? It's at 12. Yeah or in the next 15 minutes, whatever time is zone it is for you in 15 minutes from now. That's the other reason I thought I'd leave a little early. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, I'm not going to the live and I don't know about their checklist, but when I look at it, I'll let you know. I, yeah. I've I learned a lot interesting about it. Because because I think that would be great because it'd be, it's like what the hosts have. And I think that'll really help our onboarding a, you know, because it'll give people that, you know, do your, you know, hopefully it's good. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the thing. We did talk a little bit about that in the beginning. Like, you know, are people actually going to follow it if it comes from a, an app? I don't know. That's, that's the thing. Um, did you follow I, it when you joined Mighty Network? Like that little host checklist? No. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> I know a lot of my clients did. I did. A lot of my clients also ignored them. <laughs> I had like a 50-50 split. Some of my clients were like, I don't even know what that thing is. The other people were like, oh, I've done everything. I've almost got it all checked off. <laughs> I know. I'm at like 95% and I just can't get that last 5%. Going. You know what? It does bother me though with client work. I will go in there and just check all the boxes for them because like, I don't want to see the little thing. <laughs> And they'll be like, Deb, do we, if I don't do that, they'll be like, Deb, did we do everything? Because I'm doing a lot of the work on the back end. And they'll be like, well, we got to make sure we get that checklist done. <laughs> what I think about it's more like wanting to have things finished than, than maybe intentional. It's not as intentional. It's more like, I just want to check the box. Um, <laughs> go ahead. What'd you say? I was going to say, what, what about when spaces come, when, when they change over? That's going to change everything. So should we... No. Will you be spending so much time? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to elaborate a little bit on that, Dad? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> no, don't worry about spaces. It doesn't happen now. It doesn't matter. Who knows when that's going to happen? If they have announced something new, the, what I've learned about Mighty Networks, while I like a lot of the things, the frustrating thing, even when I interviewed them the other day, Jessica, you know, a couple months ago, Jessica was not going to commit to dates on product um, because that's just a f shooting themselves in the foot, basically. If they and they already did that <laughs> in 2020, they announced all of this stuff at the end of 2020, and then the entire 2021, they didn't do half that list, and people were pissed about it. So I think their method of like we're not going to be officially releasing dates until the act the actual feature is available. And a lot of clients say, um, well, what about spaces? Should we design all this, you know, and then it's going to change? Well, let's worry about the change when it happens. Let's worry about the feature when it's available. Right now, I'm not familiar with the feature being available. Now, if that changes in the next two days or four days, we'll figure that out then. You know what I mean? Um, but your onboarding process is important and you want clients in there now. You don't want to wait six months to open your doors or connect with people in certain ways or bringing them in the door. You don't want to wait for spaces, basically. Everybody, my clients are like, should we just wait till spaces? I'm like, I don't know when that's going to be. You know, that could be three weeks from now or five days from now or seven months from now. Um, so let's focus on what we can do is to get your members inside your community and interacting and get you money in your bank account because that's what's important <laughs> to most of the clients that I'm working with. They want to earn income while being able to help people transform in an online community. That's the whole point of this thing. We don't want to wait for platforms, although <laughs> Maria's probably like, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> but, but just honestly saying, 
let's focus on what we have. Let's try to do the best we can and give the members our best of what we have now. And then we can get really excited. The other thing to jump, to not jump into stuff like new features right away until you really have a strategy around a new feature. Something like Spaces, that's that's going to change the way that people do everything in their network, it sounds like, from what I understand about it, about how they invite people in the door. That goes to strategy. And so that gets very, I spent a lot of time helping people understand what's the best way for them to invite members in, how you know they're going to come in the door, and how that works for their specific members. Um, so to say that you don't want to just jump on a new feature right when it's available either without having a plan or a strategy behind it. So whenever it does come available, great. Well, I'll definitely be looking into it. I'll definitely be doing a recap and we'll probably do a workshop about it. I'll probably build a guide about it at some point. Uh, there will be a lot of stuff that I'll work on putting together as I try to keep up with all these new features with Money Networks this year because they're doing a lot and they've just hired a whole lot of people. Um, and they're really blowing up. So it's just a matter of what we have today is what we have today. And this platform, Money Networks, has a lot more than other platforms right now. There's a lot of other platforms that don't have nearly the features. So anyway. For Maria, don't announce, don't set actual dates on your thing. <laughs> to be announced I and then <laughs> hey it's here <laughs> right right or or say like, like later and then hey we got it early for you, you know, right that makes people really happy right <laughs> yeah Don't be late be early to know. <laughs> <laughs> right creating that that experience for people is definitely important and i've seen a lot of really pissed off people in mighty hosts if you look in that community, there's a lot of pissed off people in there. And basically, that community is a support community for people to gripe about all of the things that they don't like about Mighty Networks. So take it with a grain of salt. And we're going to just keep creating communities and connections and, and bringing people together in amazing ways, no matter the platform. So I love Mighty Networks, but thank you. Yes. Have a good day, everybody. I'll post up this recording tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions following this, of course, just tag me in a in a post or somewhere and I will definitely get back with you. Excited for our Friday session. We have this speaker that's going to be coming and talking about money, money mindset. So hopefully you can join us for that. Um, and then Kathy is going to be at the end of the month uh, doing her uh, presentation about her book club that she's just starting in her community and how she's gonna outlay that for the entire year of her Mighty Network. So uh, we're excited for that. And otherwise, I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care, thank you very much. Bye. Bye.